Guest next up here is uh, the treasurer of the state of West Virginia, Riley Moore, also a candidate for the second congressional district. He holds the endorsement of the current second congressional uh, member, Alex Mooney. Riley, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. How are y'all doing? We are well. Great to have you along for the ride. Where are you today? Are you in Charleston? Today I'm back in Charleston. I was in the Eastern Panhandle yesterday, back in Charleston today. Yes, you were here for the Lincoln dinner, right? I was. It was a great event. Jefferson, Berkeley County together uh, had a wonderful Lincoln dinner. Big support. People are fired up for 2024. Uh, I was the keynote of that dinner, and it was just great to see everybody there. That's excellent. Your opponent, one of your opponents was there as well, Alex Gasserud. He was on the program yesterday, and he had some critical comments for you in regards to your ESG stance and how it might affect seniors and their pension money. Yeah, I heard a little bit of that. Um, I'm not sure if it's kind of willful ignorance or kind of a lack of cognitive capacity to understand the issue. But um, essentially what's going on here is we have reformed the proxy voting system for our pension fund in the state of West Virginia. And so just simply put is let's say you own a stock. You own a stock, you own a share, then you have a vote, right, just like any individual out here. Well, we own lots of shares in the pension fund uh, that total up over 15,000 votes. And all we have said in this legislation is that those votes cannot be cast for ESG measures that are out there on boards of directors and other things like that. So they've been essentially weaponizing our dollars against our own returns, pension beneficiaries, and our interests. So we're bringing that back to um, the standard that was set by the Trump administration, uh, which is that Department of Labor rule that says, look, it can only be based on, and this is a funny term, pecuniary factors, which is risk and return. It has to have a material risk or return or financial risk or return uh, calculation when that uh, vote is cast. And um, that's simply what we're trying to do here is just maximize return for the pension beneficiary. Not having our votes cast for social causes has nothing to do whatsoever about how the money is invested. So at no point along the way would any of these votes that are cast do anything to affect the income of a senior who's relying on pension income in West Virginia? Absolutely not. Matt Miller. Uh, take us into that ESG, and for our listeners, uh, for myself included, kind of explain a little more of what that is in the investment realm. Yes, so this is a um, paradigm that's been put out there, uh, ESG, which stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance Investment Strategies. So essentially, you're driving dollars uh, not towards returns, but ideas. Right. So it could be climate change. It could be LGBTQ issues. It could be uh, human rights, diversity, equity and inclusion. So investment strategies based on that and kind of your financial um, end game and outlook is based around that uh, paradigm of ESG. So. The problem, though, right, when dollars chase ideas instead of returns, then investors and retirees end up getting hurt in all of this. Of course, the big corporate elites out here, they don't pay the price whatsoever because they're playing these games with other people's money. We have the same issue as it relates to lending to the fossil fuel industry, where several financial institutions that we were authorized to do business with stopped lending money to coal, for instance. They had a prohibition on it due to climate issues. Well, we uh, decided to put legislation forward to stop that and and stop doing business with them. So if they want to change their tune, they could still do business in the state of West Virginia. We did have one bank, U.S. Bank, change their tune. But essentially, we're not going to hand money over to banks to manage state tax dollars People listen to this program, your money to destroy the industries that created those dollars to begin with, like the coal industry. Just the last fiscal year, coal, gas, and oil, almost a billion dollars in severance taxes 
for a budget that's just over $4.6 billion. That is a lot of money. So we canceled contracts with J.P. Morgan Chase and other financial institutions, tens of millions of dollars, went and found other banks that are not in a place where we have a conflict of interest in how they're handling our money. So those are some examples of that. Um, so why you would be running as a conservative and not opposed to ESG is certainly kind of perplexing and a little hard to understand, but that's okay. Um, that's fine, but that's certainly where my position is. I don't want our dollars used for um, – Social pro, uh, social uh, warrior programs out here, such as uh, transgender and uh, reading hours and drag queen story time and all this other stuff. If that's what some people want, uh, that, that that's fine. I'm not for that. Does that, does that really happen that often? That gets cited like it's happening every five minutes. Does it really happen that often? Are we really having that many drag queen I, story it, hours? It, 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 it happens all the time. All does does the it time. really? And. And there are corporations that have voted uh, in some governance capacity through a board or one way or another to use their dollars to promote and also uh, sponsor those types of programs. So, yeah, uh, I'm certainly not for that. I didn't know drag queens were that civic minded as a group. I didn't know that was a position. Uh, Yeah, it's a very bizarre thing that we want, you know, grown men dressed as women to read stories to children. I'm not really sure why that's happening. Certainly, um, there's been a lot of things put forward uh, in terms of the thought process behind that. I I think it's absolutely terrible, and I think uh, potentially putting children in harm's way. Mr. Bodwell. Riley, are there other things that your opponent uh, favors that would not be considered uh, conservative ideals, just out of curiosity? Yeah, uh, I did hear recently that uh, uh, he is uh, in has the position as it relates to abortion and the Dobbs decision that it is clearly to him just a state's rights issue. So every state can determine uh, their laws as it relates to abortion. Uh, for me, the Dobbs decision also opens this up to federal legislation to speak to this because if you don't do something about some of these other states where you can have abortions up to the third trimester such as california and new york then you're creating an industry in those states where people will just go to that and the end of the day if you are pro-life it is about saving all lives lives in west virginia matter just as much in california new york or anywhere else anywhere else so to me this is certainly something as a congressional candidate and if i'm elected Something I want to work on um, if I am a member of Congress is trying to restrict, prohibit whatever we can get uh, as it relates to uh, abortion nationwide. Well, I think that makes that makes a lot of sense. Are there any other any other glaring things that that you guys are completely different on policy wise? Uh Not that kind of come to mind, but I haven't been paying uh, that much attention um, to what the other opponents have been saying. Well, I have to say right now, I can't even remember your opponent's name. And until this morning, I had never heard it. So, I mean, I think on a name recognition uh, side, you uh, you are way, way ahead. Um, Well, we did have that poll come out. Uh, Not my poll. Somebody else did. Uh, I think Rob cited it here just recently. And, you know, look, we're at 88.8%, and the other candidates obviously making up single digits uh, through the rest of that. So, yeah, we feel like we're in a really strong position. I mean, we're running on a proven record as a conservative. We have a proven record that we can articulate to the people of the state of West Virginia, and they know that, and they recognize that, and I think that poll certainly uh, reflects that as well. We always need more of that in Washington. We need to to balance out the, the some of the crazy that goes on in our uh, in our federal system. Hey, Riley, I want to talk to you about the uh, the state's investments and the effects the stock market has had on those investments over the last year or so. Uh, the Dow, the S and P, and the Nasdaq are actually up this year from January one to April thirty year to date. The Dow by two percent, S and P I think it was by eight, and I think the Nasdaq by sixteen. Uh, 
has that been reflected in the returns you are seeing as well? And uh, are we still below water with the, the balance since the market went south, or are you back to neutral at least? Um, you know, in terms of the pension fund, um, which I'm on the board there, uh, we're not at our high water market, but there has been uh, certainly rebound there. In terms of the state uh, tax dollars that I manage through the Board of Treasury Investment, when I first came into office, we were just under $6 billion in our operating funds. Uh, we are currently at $10.5 billion right now. So our investments uh, and also tax revenue plays a big part of that in terms of economic growth here in the state. But we are earning a great rate of return for the people of West Virginia in the what's called consolidated fund, the operating funds of the state. And also, we don't have constraints on us that say like a pension fund in California, CalPERS does, going back to ESG, they are prohibited from investing in the energy sector as it relates to fossil fuel. So you saw uh, the energy sector have a huge bump here in the stock market. Um, I think it was something like at one point they had bumped 40 percent in terms of their uh, value. And obviously they missed all of that. Well, we don't miss all of that. And um, so you've seen tech stocks down, energy stocks up. I mean, this is the whole point of trying to have a diversified investment strategy, right, and not having ESG handcuff yourself to just certain types of stocks based on some political affiliation or idea. You know, I think, you know, that's cool if you want to do, you know, your investments based on what you believe in and or what you don't believe in. That's your right as an American, and I, don't, I certainly wouldn't vote to restrict that, but... If you, if you don't believe that a company should invest pension funds and you're going to pass laws that it can't be invested in ExxonMobil or whatever, then I think you got to live that lifestyle, too. You, you know, I mean, don't, 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 don't use, make sure the electricity you use is coming from solar. Make sure it's not, or windmills, yeah, make not sure it's coal. not coming from coal. Make sure you're not using gasoline in your car. I mean, live it all the way. Don't live it half the way. And I think when it comes to investing, you know, the goal of investing is, is to, as legally as possible, mm -hmm. get as much of a return as you can so that when you retire, you're not standing there with a tin can begging for money and put, putting restrictions on your investments because it doesn't fit what this category agrees with or that category agrees with. Uh, you're just harming yourself. But if you want to live that lifestyle, live it all the way, not halfway. And it's, oh, it, yeah. I, look, if people want to invest in whatever they want to invest in, I don't care. But asset managers shouldn't be using our dollars right. to invest the way they want to invest. <laughs> right. Their, their own personal money, they can do that. But, I mean, when you have a fiduciary responsibility, your responsibility mm -hmm. is to do what you feel is going to generate the best returns on the money. That's exactly right. Look, I mean, this is what the sole focus of any fiduciary, which I am one, is the maximization of return either for the state of West Virginia or the pension beneficiaries, right? It's a maximization and maximizing return. And, you know, anybody who goes to business school or taken probably Econ 101, publicly traded companies, what, what is their, their marching orders? It's maximizing shareholder value, right? They're, they are there to maximize shareholder value. And certainly with these uh, ESG um, uh, investment strategies, that's not what they're doing, right? I mean, they're, they're playing politics with other people's money. Well, and they like Anheuser-Busch, they played politics, and look at how much investor money was lost you gotta, recently. Got to know yeah. your market there, man. Yeah, yeah got to know your market. I mean, the funny thing, like, I guess Bud Lights, you know, they're trying to shift to another market share. I, it, it, it's totally, I mean, it's all virtue signaling, obviously. I don't know who they think their customer base is, but... They did say, well, we're trying to get away from, you know, the uh, sports fan kind of frat uh, 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 customer base. And it's like, do you know who drinks Bud Light? <laughs> yeah, those, those are your basic beer drinkers. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, they don't drink it anymore. So. <laughs> right. Yes, yes. Not there's, anymore. Yeah. There's not a lot of Bud Light at the opera. Matt Miller.
Uh, let's go back to uh, the idea of pensions, and I know it wasn't that long ago in the state of West Virginia where there was a lot of concern for retirees across the mountain state and where money was going to be coming from in future years to be able to uh, continue to keep them going in their retirement. Where are we right now in our, our pension funds? How good are we sitting as a state? We are sitting uh, tremendously well. Uh, the, the IMB, the Investment Management Board, has done a very good job uh, managing those dollars. I mean, we are close to fully funded. There's no liabilities on this pension. Uh, we don't lend against it like some of these other states do. We're, we're in a very strong position. When you say we, we don't lend against it, like other states do. Exp explain what that would, would be that other states might be doing and how that helps to protect us by not doing that. Right. So, I mean, there are other states that will essentially use their pension fund as collateral um, to do certain projects and lend against it. Uh, that's something, obviously, we've never done here in the state of West Virginia, uh, luckily. And that has been something, uh, to be fair here, that has been bipartisan through the years um, to ensure that there's no liabilities on this uh, pension fund. States like New Jersey and some of these others, I mean, they're, yeah, they're in trouble. Um, West Virginia, we are in a very good position. Okay. Is there a federal mechanism where – States, if their pensions are underfunded and they start failing with the pensions, how, I mean, what it, there's a federal, there's some sort of a federal stopgap. Does it pay the full pensions or does it pay part of the pensions? And what, I mean, what's the, what is the exposure to taxpayers in West Virginia if New Jersey, California, and New York, if their pensions fail? Well, I mean, we're all Americans, right? So we're, there's going to be some level of, of exposure there, but. I, to what degree? I mean, I guess the Fed can just go print more money. Obviously, we did see the Biden administration bail out uh, a lot of the private pension plans with the unions here when um, he first took office. But certainly there is some federal backstop uh, capabilities in there. But, I mean, the end of the day, I, I don't really think that's fair to anybody. I mean, here we are as West Virginians, and we've done a great job managing – the money and being good stewards of the dollar um and then you got california and new jersey and the rest of these other states just acting completely in a reckless manner with their retirees dollars uh, by the way treasurer riley moore has been our guest on the program today and riley before i let you go i want to ask about the uh press releases you send out we talked to you last time you were on about this too just to make sure people again are aware of it and that is uh, the money that is out there that might be intended for me that i don't know about uh, it could be an old savings account an old investment account maybe a refund from the state they were never able to get to me because i changed addresses or whatever can you talk to people again about how they find this money Yes, that's unclaimed property, and you can go to WestVirginiaTreasury.com, click on unclaimed property. We have an online database. You can look your name up, and you never know what you might find there. We just uh, returned $167,000 uh, to a woman in Kanawha County that was from uh, Union Carbide, actually, uh, part of retirement plan. And you never know what you're going to find there. And, and there is one other thing I do have to just uh, plug here for the office, just so everybody is aware, May 15th is the deadline to apply for Hope Scholarship. So if you're interested in taking advantage of this wonderful program that provides educational choice and freedom here in the state of West Virginia, Hope Scholarship deadline is May 15th. Right. Thanks so much, man. I always enjoy talking with you. 